In this session, we are going to do the initial part of our project, which would be interfacing our project with the um, outside world based on the requirement. So before working on any of the project, the most important thing is to understand the requirement, come up with the high level architecture, identify the domain objects and then we can start working. So uh, this is a link, Google Doc link from where we can understand what are the requirements for this project. So on high level, we understand that uh, this is a library management and it would interact mainly with two objects which are books and students. So uh, uh, whatever the books they can be assigned to students and uh, whatever are the students uh, they can there would be some validation logic that one student can assign maximum five books or whatever that would be business logic around it. So uh, the presentation layer we are going to have is the command prompt wherein we will take the input from user, user will enter some of the values, name, some, he has to answer some questions so that we can simulate that student is going to log in to the library well, and if login is not there he should be able to create a login once he goes in there he should be able to see the books, identify the books and then assign and uh, unassign them, this is how it is menu driven so it should be the command prompt menu since we are not adding any UI as of now but later on uh, we can add angular UI or whatever other UIs we feel like uh, as the UI but this is essentially a Java middleware application this is not a web application so we will be understanding more in terms of the uh, you know the middle tier or if we think about it as a three tier architecture because this won't be having any database connectivity neither the UI this is just a business uh, logic layer you know, for the project now uh, there, there uh, are requirements when system loads you have to initialize it with some book so we are going to have some um, array list or some list which will have some uh, books pre-populated because as I said this project the uh, database layer is out of scope Later on we can add Hibernate and we can uh, add the database layers with MongoDB or Hibernate or anything else in the advanced stage uh, of our learning or project. So when we start the program, um, a user should, we should have the capability of the factory pattern which is we should be able to create a student out of our project and that student can uh, be assigned or uh, you know books and student can be relate in one to one or one to many relationship once we get the student id we can assign book after assignment give a user friendly message that your book has been assigned and, and do not uh, do the duplicate assignment that is how validation so let's quickly get started with everything which book should have starting with the additional nice to have nice to have so there are two kind of requirements one is the bare bone requirement which is essential for the project one is nice to have so even if we, our books are not getting sorted it doesn't stop the system to work so if it is getting sorted it's nice to have otherwise it's not a blocker but if you are not able to assign the book or something like that that's a blocker that's a big no we have to have that then while uh, developing the system we would try to use different kind of collections and then we will try to have loose coupling and cohesive classes so our code is structured properly so in our library management project what we have is uh, uh, just an initial uh, you know client program which will be mainly interacting with the end user uh, so this uh, this is just we are trying to do a scan whatever user gives the input now if um, while so what is the use of the while loop is until and unless it would get the repeat flag as one which initially we are assigning it to one it would go inside otherwise it would exit so this variable we are setting it up by taking the input from the user and that's how we will be moving ahead after this question so this would be the footer message this would be we'll be telling uh, either to terminate or you know so let's try to first run this when we say user to continue or run this 
so uh, we are trying to do a try catch and there is a reason for this why we use try catch instead of if else or whatever so what happens is can class uh, try to get the next int but if it's a string or no or anything else what we are expecting then we will uh, get the exception and we do not want the user to see print stack track or errors when he is exiting that's a bad uh, user experience so we will catch that um, problem whatever happens and then we will exit with graceful uh, you know graceful message which would be here so we can we can we rather move this line also but let's just try to run this one so do you want to rerun the program this is since this is the end that's why we are saying and we say yes which means one and if we say two then we got the exit program exited again we will run and this time it's going to ask do you want to rerun the program and I'll say no so still it would exit so why we haven't got any exception because it was in try catch so we are going to do it again here and let's assume we never had this now we'll understand how the user experience would be so we are trying to run it and I said do you want to run the program I say no and that's the bad user experience and we exit it so you need to in your program you need to uh, take care that is called as defensive coding you need to take care of your own errors so whenever anything errors out you catch it you fix it and have a smooth experience so once the program exits we will say thanks for using our program so it should come after here So that's how uh, some nice message whatever we are trying to do and this would be the welcome message okay let's try to run this now as soon as program starts it gives you the welcome message now we'll have the menu but once the menu is there then we say do you want to run the program press 1 for yes and 0 or other digits to accept that is simple and it should work we say 1 we say 1 now we don't see the this message because we took it at the proper location otherwise we were already seeing thank you now I'll say 100 and then it says thank you and it accepts out gracefully so now let's try to first um, you know, try user stuff right so we would try and take the input from user for his user login so let's try and do that real quick so we are assuming that we will be having some dummy systems um, dummy users in system in case if they are not there then we should also allow the uh, user registration or student registration so we'll say i n t e g e s integer student id and we will give it as zero So first thing we will ask do you have a student ID and then we will take the option as yes or no. So 1 press 1 for yes and 0 2 
So we can treat there are a lot of possibilities to make it more user friendly but for now we are just giving two options either you have to do a login actual user or you need to register that's all we can have several cases but that's fine so once um, the uh, he enters whatever number so we have to read here his input so we will try to read the input from scanner this will scan the digits and once it scans we will say the student id now before going here we have to check if so we need to ta take the option first we need to take the option before taking the id to so create login option and this would be the login option now if login option is equal to is equal to one then we will do something else we will do something so here we will say please enter your student id And then whatever student ID he does here, from there we will do retrieve student and go ahead. Otherwise, we will say create a new user. So let's try to first, you know, do this thing. From here, we'll run. Because if we do a lot of coding and then start breaking, it's best that whatever changes we make, we'll test then and there. So, do you have a student ID? Press 1 for yes and 0 to register. So, we say, yes, I have a student ID. Please enter your student ID. I say 0. Then, do you want to rerun the program? Yes, I want to rerun the program. Do you have a student ID? Press so we are trying to rerun it, right? Press zero to register. We say zero. We try to register, and then it says, "Do you want to rerun?" We say yes. Now we'll do the corner case. We took one and two. Now we'll take another option. Do you want to register? Press one. We'll say press five. That's not an option. So in bad case, what happens? We'll see. So it uh, you know came down. Uh, to the exit option directly which is good because you enter an invalid option so what we can do here if this is the case else uh, actually we we are supposed to do the else if condition and so we we'll do it here we we'll say else if option is zero and else now we will say invalid entry so the third option would be taken care of this. so basically this is pretty much uh, the client facing program uh, basically the client now we will start in our next video we will start creating the student object and we will start retrieving it we will before finishing this we will try to run if someone says 5 what message he says so if someone is trying to do uh, please enter your student id okay and then we will say here one or zero we say five great so invalid entry this also comes good invalid entry for students module so we have books module and we have students module but first we talked about student module so we will now try to create the uh, actual user in our next session